So we should have a pair of sleeves and you need to lay them out so that you have um, your single notch together with your single notch and your double notch together with your double notch. So they're going to sit like this. So make sure that your notches match up. So one this side and one this side and those sleeves are going to be sewn into the armhole. So we put them, we bring them in like this. We match up the sleeve heads and then we sew together around here and around here to set the sleeve into the top. But before we do that, we need to gather the sleeve heads. So what we're going to do first of all is on each sleeve, we are going to sew a line of gathering stitches from the notch at the front to the notch at the back on both sleeves. And we're going to use a straight stitch, the longest possible, like a, a four or five stitch length. And then we're going to gather the sleeve head along those stitches. So I'll start at one of my notches and I'm going to do these gathers within the seam allowance. I'm just going to come in about half a centimetre from the edge and I want my stitch to be a straight stitch and my stitch length to be four or five. Make sure I don't do a back stitch. I want plenty of thread tailing off behind it. And then I just gently go all the way around that sleeve head. Have plenty of thread at the end and you can see the gathering stitches there going around the top of that sleeve head. I'll do two rows this helps to give a nice even gather and um, also means that if one of your stitch lines comes unstuck you've got a spare one so exactly the same thing again just coming in a couple of millimeters from my initial line of stitching and we're going to do this on both the sleeves. Try not to let your two lines cross over because if you do that your stitches will lock each other. There we are, so you can see there's two rows of stitching going around that sleeve head. So what I do now is I hold, hold on to a couple of the, the threads here and I can just pull and walk that fabric along the thread and this will just create those pretty gathers. And they're going to look so luscious in this velvet, um, the way that it catches the light with those gathers I think is just going to be really effective um, but it equally looks very pretty on the the jersey as well I really think that I love a gathered sleeve head and I find that gathering gathered sleeve heads in a way are much easier than non-gathered ones because you know you can just fit them in nicely and the gathers um, just hide a multitude <laughs> if you've got to make a beautifully smooth sleeve head it's actually quite tricky so this is definitely my favourite type of sleeve. Look at those beautiful gathers, lovely, so satisfying. And you can see now how, how that sleeve head is going to look. So I want to do that same process on the other sleeve. And then once we've done that, we can set the sleeves into the top. So we're now ready to attach the sleeves to the armholes. So I'll start off on this side and I've got my two notches and two notches, one notch and one notch. So I know that that is the correct sleeve for that side. And I am going to flip it over so that it's right sides together. And the first place that I want to match is I want to find that mark which shows me the, um, the sleeve head, the top of the sleeve head. And I'm going to match that up with the shoulder seam. 
Once I've found it, I can just um, pin or clip that sleeve head notch to the shoulder position where I have my um, shoulder seam. Make sure that that shoulder seam is pressed towards the back as well. Then I know that the sleeve has to end here at the underarm, so I can just put a pin in there. And then where those twin notches are there, I'm going to match those up as well and put a pin there. Then the remainder of that curve I can just pin together. So this is the flat part of the sleeve that will go at the front under your arm. And then do the same on the other side. So start by matching up the edge of the sleeve with the underarm and put a pin in there. Match up the notches. Pin around that underarm curve, matching the raw edges. And then I can now walk the fullness of those sleeve gathers around the remaining curve and pin it in place. Just want to make sure that the amount of gathers is evenly spread out throughout that sleeve head. So that's now pinned in place all the way around. And again, I always think with stuff like this, where we're making something on an overlocker, it is super quick to go straight to the overlocker. And if you're confident, then by all means, um, go straight onto the overlocker and whip that together. Um, but if you are, you know, maybe a bit new to this sort of um, top, then why not go ahead and baste together your um your sleeve and your top on your sewing machine the other good reason why to do this is it means that you can take those pins out um, because i do not like getting pins near my overlocker um, you know i just think that they can get into the mechanism and damage it um, or blunt the blade so i always like to even though it takes a little bit longer just to baste this in place first and then once it's basted in place, I can check that I'm happy with it and then go ahead and um, finish it on my overlocker. Making sure that the raw edges are matching up and I'm just going to baste it in place within the seam allowance using um, a zigzag stitch that's going to be easy to undo should I wish to make any corrections. And, um, you know, it's less nerve wracking because... If something's not quite right, you can easily unpick and correct. Um, not so easy to do when you're working on an overlocker, so why not just make your life a little less stressful by basting it all together first. And then once you've made this top a few times and you feel happy about, um, about it, then of course you can just go straight onto your overlocker. Likewise, if you're using a sewing machine, again, just you, you can use like a big, long running stitch initially, and then once you're happy, you can use your stretch or zigzag lightning stitch or your um, running stitch. So I'm just using a, a zigzag for this, holding it in place. So 
So I've just used my zigzag stitch just to hold that sleeve in place. And I've been able to remove all my pins and I can trim off all those extra threads now. But this allows me just to check that I'm happy with my sleeve before taking it over to my overlocker. So if I turn it right sides out, I can see that it looks really nice. I've got no um, unsightly tucks or haven't caught the fabric anywhere because that happens as well. Happens to the best of us. So I'm just happy that that looks nice and smooth on that sleeve head there. So what I can do now is go over to my overlocker and overlock um, that sleeve in place, knowing that everything's sitting nicely. And I'll still be quite careful as I pass that through my overlocker. But I'm not catching anything, but it just, um, yeah, it's just better than having all of those pins near my overlocker as well. Give myself a little mark there at the one centimetre line. So I just want to make sure that my, that's where my needle is going to be. And I'm just going to very slowly and carefully overlock round this curve of this arm hole. And I just keep folding back to check that nothing is going to get caught underneath and take it nice and slowly. So that first sleeve is now overlocked in place. So when you turn it through to the right side, it looks really, really nice. And you can see that t-shirt coming together with a gathered sleeve. So I now just want to do exactly the same on the other side. So the, our top has now, with both sleeves set in, our top has now taken this typical T-shape, back, front, sleeve, sleeve. What we want to do is we want to fold our top so that it's sitting with right sides together. So we're looking at the wrong side of the fabric. And one by one, we're going to sew together under the arm and all the way down the side seam to the hem. So we'll start here, come to here and come all the way down. So this is a fairly straightforward step now, nice and easy. No basting needed. Um, the seams, I want to just have those pressing towards the sleeve. So I'll start by securing the layers together at the underarm position. And then I'll put a few clips in place to hold everything together. And then I'm going to go in one long swoop down each side. So that's clipped together. We're going to start here. We're going to come here. We want to try and, because we're on the overlock, we want to try and straighten that out as much as possible so that we don't have a hole at the underarm. And then we're going to come all the way down to the to the bottom of the hem here. Again, if you're using your sewing machine, same thing. You're just going to come along here, pivot, and then come down here with your whichever stitch you're using, your running stitch or your stretch stitch. And so again, I'm working with a one centimetre seam allowance. Take the clips off as I go. Make sure that those raw edges are together. Seams pressed towards the sleeves. Making sure that nothing's getting caught up underneath. When I come to this angle, I'll just try and fold that fabric to straighten the angle. There's that seam done. And just do the same for the other side. And our top is now really taking shape. It's all overlocked or sewn together. And the only thing left is to do the hems, but let's turn this the right sides out first of all. It's always the exciting part to see how it's looking. And at this stage, you might want to try your top on to check for fit and length. You know, do you want to um, 
leave the hem as it is or do you want to take it up a bit more same with the um, sleeve lengths there and then once you've done that then we can move on to the hems and so for the final finishing touches i'm over my over at my ironing board and i wanted to just show you how i'm going to approach the hems so i've done one sleeve first and what i find with velvet or velour is you don't really want to do a hem that's going to show on the right side because it just messes up with the pile and you get an unclean look um, so with especially if it's like a quite a high shine lustrous velvet what I've chosen to do is um, just a hand stitched blind hem so if you look very closely I'll try and get it so that you can see you can probably just see tiny little stab stitches um, along that hem there if I show you how that looks on the inside all I've done is I've just hand stitched picking up a tiny piece of the, the cloth from the wrong side and then uh, attaching it to the hem. Now you don't need to finish this raw edge because the velvet will not fray so you don't need to worry about overlocking or anything like that but just to hold that hem up first of all I've gently folded it, pressed it, pinned it up and then I've just very quickly whizzed round and hand stitched um, that hem in place so that from the right side you have minimal um minimal thread work minimal stitching showing so that when when worn you know you get that nice clean finish now the other thing you can do is to just completely leave your hem raw if you've cut everything nice and and neatly then to be honest with you that is another acceptable way of finishing or not finishing your top um but I think that the, the doing the hand stitched hem actually is the best option for this. Now you can do a blind hem on your sewing machine, but because with a, to create a successful machine sewn blind hem, I do rely heavily on pressing. And obviously I don't want to do too much pressing on my velvet. So that's why I've fallen on, after doing a few experiments, I've fallen on um, a hand stitched hem as the most reliably good option, the most reliably attractive finish for your top. Now, if you're sewing with the other fabric, with the Ponte Roma, or you're making your Lobelia top with a, a jersey, you can just go ahead and finish your hem as you would any t-shirt hem by zigzagging or, um, you know, doing a, a flat lock stitch or cover stitch, whatever you would normally do. But what I'm going to talk you through on this particular project is how to sew a hem onto a velvet um, t-shirt. So I've done this sleeve, I'm going to talk you through now how to do the other sleeve. So first of all, we'll turn our top inside out and I should just pop the sleeve onto the end of my sleeve board um, and you can use the end of your ironing board, it's just that this is easy for me to, to um, film. And then what I want to do is just very very gently come around my sleeve and fold it up by the required amount and pin that in place and this is a 1.5 cm hem so i'll just um carefully roll that to 1.5 centimeters pin it in place and i will continue around the circumference of that hem pulling it around bit by bit and pinning it in place This has been pinned up all the way round. That's my sleeve hem there. I've got my snips and my um, hand sewing needle, a nice quite fine uh, hand sewing needle there. I'll just draw some thread out from my bobbin, <clears throat> which is what I do whenever I'm hand sewing. Oh, my needle has attached itself, a bit magnetic. And then we'll just thread that And tie a wee knot in the end. And then I'll always start at one of the seams because that gives me a bit of something bulky to hang on to. And I'll just put my needle through there. And then the knot I've tied isn't going to be strong enough. So I'll loop my thread back round. And then I'll pass my needle through that loop of thread to tie a knot. And I'll do that twice. So through the seam and then needle back through that loop 
tie a knot and that's well and truly anchored in that position now. Okay, so make sure the weight of your t-shirt, the weight of your cloth is supported on your table. And then I've zoomed in quite a bit so that you can hopefully see what I'm doing. And I hope that this is clear. Whoops, I got caught up there. Okay, so I will now work my way round, taking out the pins as I go. And what I want to do is just grab the tiniest piece. Now, can you see how much I've got there? Just the tiniest bit of fabric, like that. And then I'll swing the needle into the hem, <clears throat> into the seam allowance. And I will just continue. And I'll try and keep my stitches fairly small if I can, fairly close together. So I'll just pick up that tiniest bit of fabric there and then into the hem. And it's kind of working in a diagonal like this. So each of your stitches will sort of come across. So tiny bit. through into the fabric. The diagonal um, format, the diagonal direction gives you a bit of stretch. If you get a loop in your thread, just pull it through. Whoops. Okay, so let's make sure you can see. I'm looking at my screen here to check that I'm not, that you're not watching thin air. There you go, so through like so. And you can st see those stitches forming. A couple of cent, couple of like half a centimeter on, a few millimeters on, and the next one. Whoops. I actually I'm doing this by looking at my screen, which is quite a weird um, thing. So excuse me for my clumsiness. Pick up a little, and through there I go. And I am just going to continue around my hem just pick up a tiny lot of fiber from the back side of your velvet and like this there you go and through there and once you get going and you get into a rhythm it's not going to take you forever don't worry you kind of get quite quick at doing this this is a good way to hem anything that you don't want the stitches to really show on the front side. If you've got glasses on, you have to perch them on top of your head <laughs> for this one. So just picking up a tiny bit and round. So I'm gonna continue all the way round the full um, circumference of my sleeve. Oops, my needle's come unthreaded. That's a good time to stop. And then if you look at the right side now, you can sort of almost see those little stabs. But once, you know, that's been worn and pressed, they're going to almost disappear. And it's just going to be a much, much nicer finish to your hem um, compared with seeing a kind of a heavy stitch on the right side, which really will um, disturb the pile of your fabric. So I'm going to carry on, finish that, and then I'm going to show you about pressing. I've finished now just um, hand stitching up that hem and you can just see those little stabs where I've um, stitched through and on the inside looks like that. Once you get back to the beginning again you can finish in the same way as you started. So we're going to now give this a wee little press. I'm going to use two dots on my iron, nice and cool. Um, and you know Test your iron on a scrap first before moving on to your, your fabric because you do want to be very careful when ironing velvet. Now, any pile fabric, um, it's called a pile fabric because the fibres on the right side are cut to create a fuzzy surface. So if you can imagine you looked at it through a magnifying glass, it would look like lots of little things sticking up. Um, what we want to do when we press is to take some of your scraps some of your scrap fabric and you're going to put it pile to pile so there's my pile and there's my pile and if I press if I use my scrap of fabric as a pressing cloth those fibers will mesh into each other and provide some protection from being crushed if you imagine if I've got my pile sticking up like this and then I put my iron on it it's going to crush it whereas if 
I've got pile on pile, when I put my iron on, they can sink into each other a little bit and it offers a little bit of protection. So I like to use a bit of scrap fabric as a pressing cloth and then I'm using a fairly cool iron and I'm supporting the weight of the iron. I'm not pressing down heavily and I'm just moving it about in the direction of the pile. And it's just kind of setting that crease there so that I don't get a bounce at the hem, if that makes sense. So I don't get the, um, you know, the sort of the, the hem showing as a little sausage at the end of my sleeve. <laughs> and I'm just being very gentle with my fabric as I'm pressing it. But a very, very light pressing has just finished off my sleeve nicely. And you can go ahead and do the same technique for the hem at the bottom of your t-shirt. Whilst I'm up at this end, I also feel like I want to give my neck band a little press. Um, and so what I'll do is I'm gonna turn it inside out, turn my t-shirt inside out. And the other way that we can press is actually to put our velvet underneath. So put our velvet scrap onto my ironing board like this. And this isn't such a big issue if you're working with a velvet that is textured in some way, like crushed velvet or um, something with a rib in it, then it won't really show up as much, but with this sort of flat lustrous velvet. And then what I can do is I can just go round and again with a cool iron, I can just carefully press. What I don't want to do is press too much here because I'll create an impression of that overlocked edge on the right side and I'll get a rim here which will show. So I'm just going to lightly press just that crease there to get a nice finish on my neckline. And there we are with a bit of gentle pressing on a low setting. We've finished off our hems in quite an attractive way. And we can then um, plan a nice party um, so that we can wear our beautiful top. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed making that and um, can't wait to see them all, see how they all turn up in the gorgeous colours that I've got. So um, happy sewing and I'll see you for the next time.